we rise today after a, a long night last night, uh, a night that I think uh, could produce some fruits today or tomorrow or, or soon, I hope, because on behalf of the just over one million Montanans and uh, families across this country, and I believe a vast majority of the people in this body, uh, we need to put this shutdown to an end. Folks, whether you're a welder in Butte or a teacher in Billings or a sugar beet farmer in Sydney or a mill worker in Columbia Falls, they've all told me and they will continue to tell me that this body is incredibly f dysfunctional, that Congress is incredibly dysfunctional, and we ought to break that. We ought to start working together. We ought to start listening to one another. We shouldn't be taken off the right side of the earth nor the left side of the earth and work in the middle for policies that work for America. The budget may be the most important of those policies that work for America. It has been 112 days now since our budget ran out, the end of September of this year. We have responded to that budget running out by four short-term continuing resolutions, we call them. Just stopgap measures, band-aids, if you will, kick the can down the road. It's described by a lot of different methods on funding our budget. That has resulted in um, costing the taxpayers additional dollars, incredible inefficiencies, and caused by the members of this body not doing their job and leadership not doing their job. Enough is enough. We need to roll up our sleeves. We need to work together. We need to talk. We need to listen to one another. And we need to come to a resolution of this problem. We can talk about the Children's Health Insurance Program. It's an incredibly important program. There is no doubt about it. But it has been held hostage for the last four months. And I can tell you that if it was put on the floor and could have been put on the floor at any time in the last four months, it would have passed, I believe, overwhelmingly by this body. Why? Because kids need it, families need it. We're putting, in Montana's case alone, 24,000 kids at risk to not have critical care. The same can be said for our health care centers. The same can be said for the opioid crisis. The same can be said for security on our northern and southern border. The same could be said for our military. The uncertainty that we have without a long-term budget that goes to the end of the fiscal year is unacceptable. We all know it. We've been talking about it for months since nothing ever comes to the floor to solve it except for a continuing resolution which is not a solution at all, it's a band-aid. Last night I proposed a 72-hour, three-day extension so that the shutdown wouldn't happen until Monday night, so that we could work together to negotiate this deal, put some pressure on the body to work together to come up with a deal by Monday night. Seemed reasonable enough to me. We've been talking about these issues by month, for months, but the majority leader objected to keeping the government open and pushing ourselves, driving ourselves to the negotiating table to get something done. Look, we've, I've, I've worked in this body with a number of folks on my side of the aisle and on the other side of the aisle 
and we've had success. I bring this up often because Johnny Isaacson is an incredibly good chairman of the Veterans Affairs Committee. I happen to be a ranking member, and Johnny Isaacson work well together. We don't always agree. But from the very beginning, we've agreed to put what we disagree off to the side and work on what we agree upon. And what has transpired is a record number of votes on tough issues coming out of the Veterans Affairs Committee. Why? Because we're working for the veterans. And that's what we need to be doing here. Not working for a political party, not posturing ourselves for the next election, not putting working families and businesses at risk, but working together to make a difference for this country with a long-term funding bill that addresses a number of issues. They've all been laid on the table, from health care to opioids to pensions to our military to border security. The list goes on. But it's a list we can work with. We know what needs to be done. We need to quit playing games. One of the people that I have incredible respect for in this body that has what I believe uncommon common sense is a senator from Maine. Senator King and I visit oftentimes off the floor and we talk about our frustrations with this body because it doesn't have to be this way. We can get things done if we work together. So Senator King, can you explain to me why, why we continue to have a budget that doesn't work for the American people, it continues to be a patchwork of month by month or week by week continuing resolutions, and what we need to do to fix that. 